Hi and welcome to uh, yet another Photoshop tutorial. Here we're going to be looking at different selecting techniques or selection techniques to grab parts of the image that we want to edit and change. Now the first thing I normally do when getting started is I duplicate the background layer just in case I make any mistakes. I can always go back to my old copy. So for selecting stuff we have a range of tools starting from the second icon down uh, from the marquee tool which selects an area um, it's defined as a regular shape, so with the marquee tool, I can select a rectangle. So if I wanted to grab a snapshot of just the surface of the water and the sun in the distance, um, I can do so. And if I release that, I get that image. Or if I hold down, do this, and then hold down Shift, it keeps the aspect ratio of height to width, which can be quite useful for when you are selecting special things such as a circle. So if I want to try and get the sun. I can then sort of outline the sign and capture that. And these, these tools are yeah, fairly basic getting you started. The next tool set of tools are the lasso tools. Now the general lasso tool allows you to select stuff of a, a regular shape. Uh, I'll just turn it back to select my place. The polygon lasso tool, which is my preferred favourite, gives you this controlled mechanism for selecting along edges. So here I'm just clicking on the outside of the mountain, following the rough topology of it, and I'll come back to the start and I'll double click to close off that selection. It allows me a lot of control over the shape. If you have something with a very clear edge, then the magnetic lasso tool will automatically flow across that edge. You notice that I'm not clicking or you can't hear the mouse going off. And this allows me to, again, select that shape with relative ease. The thing I find awkward about this one is that it, it does what it thinks is best. So it denies you a little bit of control over the shape. And you'll notice up the peak of the mountain here at the top, it's missed a little piece. And then down on the side here, I've got a bit of sky and a bit of ground mixed in together. So there's those ones. And then there's the other one, other two tools, which is the quick selection and the magic wand. Quick selection, you just click an area, hold and drag it across all those of a similar shape. And usually grabs a good shape, although sometimes you get this sort of blowout where it just suddenly decides that those are of a similar colour and let's just go there. The other one is the magic wand. So here I'm able to just click and select an area. The critical feature here is the tolerance. If I want to be very controlled about the area, I can just select reduce the number and it gets all the connecting pixels of that colour range. If I wanted to get a very wide range, I can jump it up to 64. And this allows me to select whole sections, as you can see it's doing here. Now, with this, there are some keyboard shortcuts that are very useful. So I'll drop the tolerance back to 32, which is where I started. And I'll select an area. So here it's on the default selection idea of just select something and forget what I had before. If I hold down Shift, I can then expand my selection. This works with all of these selection tools. If I choose to hold down Alt, I can remove from selection. So if I select over here and say, decide I don't want that area, it's now gone. And I can then end up with weird patterns. This becomes useful for the lasso tool because if I hold down Shift, I can go, well, I want that area. And then I'll add this little bit over here and this little bit here. And then I'll hold down Alt and get rid of the C line. Uh, the only nuisance about the lasso tool is when you mismove your mouse and end up with something weird. So that's the basic selection tools. Then we get things such as select all, deselect. So deselect is the one I used earlier, which was control D, um, the keyboard shortcut that is. And that allows me to, when I've selected an area, to unselect it. So if I wanted to inverse this selection, so if I went through all the effort of selecting sky, just going to magic wand it. Oh, quick selection. Quick selection through the sky. Come on, quick sky. Catches up very slowly. Uh, add to selection, please. Just thinking about it. My poor little laptop's having problems keeping up. And it gets everything, including the mountaintop. So if we remove a patch of this. So I've selected everything except the mountain. With the select inverse, it selects just the mountain for me. And this allows me to control what I'm 
getting out. Generally with selections, you use it to paint on images, manipulate stuff and that sort of thing. It becomes very useful when you use such things such as an image mask. And this will get back to the non-destructive editing I've talked about. And with a layer mask, what I can do, and if I hide the background layer, I can see that I'm on this layer here, the second layer, I've got my full image and I'm only letting through the parts that I want. So here I can select the image, here I select just the mask. And what I can use is I can use a regular brush with a bit of black and paint it in so that I can remove stuff, flip it back to white and I can paint in the image and get the bits that I want. So I can end up with this sort of painterly edged feeling depending on the kind of brush I'm using. Excuse me, I've got a cold. Um, so this allows you to get things the way you want and show through the elements that you want. So to take a very simple example, I'm going to grab this crit moon that I grabbed from Wikipedia, which is a Creative Commons open source image in this case. And the person who took the photograph was Thomas Brenson. Um, so I'm just going to select that in there. And for that moon, I want to just get the moon and nothing else. Now this is one of the tricks I've picked up over the years with using the circular marquee tool or list marquee is I'm going to imagine a line across the top and a line down the side and where those two intersect is going to be one edge of my sphere and then I bring it across the other way probably hold down shift to make sure it stays as a sphere and get roughly the moon shape that will give me the mask of my moon and if I happen to mask this I get a moon with a light black edge now this is a little too big for the scene, but that's okay, we'll just go with it anyway. I'm going to use the move tool to drag it across and place it above here, and then it looks ginormous. Uh, then, I can then change the type of layer mask to blend it in a better and, and put some effort. But you can see here, just from using controlled selection and masking, I can combine multiple images together before I even get to the ideas of how to touch it up and retouch it to make it blend nicely and since this is aiming to be a quick video we're already at seven and a half minutes i think i'll cut it there thank you